Dear all, in this presentation, I'll be discussing what is load cell, then types of load cell, how does load cell operate, what are the applications of load cell, and finally, pros and cons of load cell. Let us have the discussion. First of all, let us, let us understand, what do you mean by load cell? Basically, load cells are elastic device that can be used for the measurement of force through the indirect method through the use of secondary transducers. In fact, the load cell is a secondary transducer. Why do you call it a secondary transducer? Because the force that will be converted into displacement or a strain or a stress. Then with the help of strain gauge, the stress will be converted into electrical resistance. So there are two conversion. First, the force will be converted into strain or displacement or whatever it can be. Thereafter, the displacement or strain that will be converted to electrical resistance. So in load cell, we are inculcating strain gauge. We require one strain gauge along with the load cell. Okay. So we can say that load cell is a secondary transducer. This is one of the important viva question. Why do you consider as load cell as a secondary transducer? Because two energy conversion will be taken place. The load cell utilizes an elastic member as a primary transducer. Okay. There, is, there will be a column. Okay, there will be a, a cubical column. I'll be showing you a rectangular column will be that. So inside the rectangular column, there will be one strain gauge. Okay, that will act as a secondary. That is why it is known as secondary transducer. Okay. Uh, when the combination of strain gauge, then elastic member is used for computing weighing weight or force. It is known as load cell. The major application, you can able to compute the weight and you can able to calculate the force. These are the major applications of load cell. So I hope you understood what is a load cell, why it is called as a secondary transducer. Okay, two energy conversion that will be taken place. Force or weight, you can call either force or weight that will be converted into displacement or you can call strain. Then displacement or strain that will be converted into electrical resistance. Okay, therefore it is known as a secondary transducer. Let me show you a typical schematic diagram of a load cell. How does it operate? And uh, the input will be force. It may be force or you can call weight. It may be weight. Okay, force or weight. Now, the with the help of this column, there will be a cubical column which is available here. So, with the help of this cubical column or elastic body, there will be an elastic body. You can call it as elastic body or cub cubical column. Elastic body. You have you can able to see the elastic body. With the help of this elastic body, the force or weight that is going to convert into strain. Okay. Inside, you can able to see one strain gauge. It is very clearly visible. Any type of strain gauge can be used. Bounded type is normally preferable. Okay, it is preferred to use bounded type. So with the help of the strain gauge, whatever the displacement of strain that is developed from the external body, that is going to convert it into electrical resistance. Therefore, you can able to measure force in terms of uh, electrical resistance. So that's the speciality of load cell. So this is the way how load cell operate. So it is known as secondary transducer. It's not a primary transducer, it's a secondary transducer. So the details have been written over there. The first process involved conversion of force into mechanical displacement, or you can call strain, which is done by a column. Okay, there is a column, rectangular column, or you can call it as elastic body. While the second process involves the conversion of mechanical displacement into changes, changes into resistance with the help of strain gauges. That is why it is known as secondary transducer. We observe that the force is detected by the column in the first stage. That is very, very true force will be converted into displacement of strain. Then uh, the detector is known as primary transducer, where the strain gauge is actually the secondary part. It is known as secondary transducer. So load cell will operate with the help of strain gauge. Always remember that load cell is operating with the help of strain gauge. Without strain gauge, load cell is not possible. The existence of load cell is highly impossible. So both are connected. Do remember how the energy conversion will be taken place. Let us understand what are the major factors to be considered while designing the load cell. So you have to calculate the stiffness of the elastic element because that rectangular column which I have shown you that is very important. Let me show you if you want once again. So I will take you the rectangular column. So the stiffness of the material is very important. That has to be computed first. Next, the optimum positioning of the gauges on the element. Where do you keep the strain gauge? That is matters a lot. So look at the strain gauge here. We have placed at the middle or wherever it may be. So just identify where you can place accordingly. Okay, that is also another important position of the gauge. Then provision of compensation of the temperature because strain gauge is there now. It depends on the room temperature, how you are going to compensate. 
Okay, what is the method for improving the compensation, temperature compensation? Yes, you are able to get the wrong reading. Okay, that is undesirable. So that point you have to remember. So these are the three important factors which need to be considered while designing the load cell. Let us understand the classification of load cell. As you can observe, there are three classification basically, hydraulic load cell, pneumatic load cell, and strain gauge type load cell. Let's understand with the help of a schematic diagram. So that concept will be very much clear. So I'll take you how to explain the hydraulic load cell. How does hydraulic load cell operate? As the name suggests, we require a fluid. We can able to see a fluid. See, fluid filled space. There is a fluid and there will be a diaphragm. It is made up of elastic body. Okay, a along with that, there will be accessory. Supporting accessories also will be there along with the uh, diaphragm. So you can able to see in the top layer, that is a loading platform. Our ultimate goal is to measure either force or weight. Okay, because there is a huge machine, I need to me measure the weight or I need to measure the force. So external object is directly kept over the loading platform. Whenever you are keeping the, with respect to the force, with respect to the force, what is going to happen? The diaphragm will come down so that the area of the fluid space is getting varied, the area. So as you know that, so pressure is equal to force divided by area. Force divided by area. So the pressure is inversely proportional to area. That is very clear. You studied Pascal's law. Okay. Now, as the area changes, suppose it may be either increased or decreased. As the area changes, as the area reduces, pressure will be increased. So suppose if the force is more, what is going to happen? Area will come down. Area will be reduced. Because of that, pressure will be increased. So we can able to connect the relation between force and pressure. The pressure is directly proportional to force. As the force increases, the what is going to happen? As the force increases, pressure is also getting increased. Both are directly proportional. How? Because area is getting varied. That's a speciality. So you can able to measure up to 25 mega newton. Okay, with uh, very good accuracy, almost 0.1 percentage accuracy and 0.02 resolution. So these are the important parameter how to measure the force or weight with the help of hydraulic load cell. Hydraulic means there is a fluid. Okay, that is why it is known as hydraulic type load cell. I hope the concept is clear to everyone. Uh, moving on to the next type of load cell, pneumatic load cell. Pneumatic. What is the word meaning pneumatic? It is associated with the pressure. Here, instead of fluid, we are going to use the air. Air is a medium. We are going to use the air. And there, is, there will be a diaphragm and a loading platform. So you are applying the force externally. It may be either force or weight. You are applying externally. As the force increases, the area of the di diaphragm that is coming down, due to the uh, changes in the position, the area of the air, whatever the area which is available here now, that is actually getting expanded, that is deviated, area will be changed. So with respect to changes in area, the pressure will be varied. Okay, that means the force is directly proportional to pressure. Only the difference is here you are going to use the air as a medium. Air, earlier you are using the liquid, okay, fluid like uh, water or any, any type of material. So this is also works based on the force balance principle. The force is applied on the one side of the diagram of the flexible material and balanced by the pneumatic pressure on the other side. Okay, therefore the force which is applied externally that is proportional to the pressure. This is the way how pneumatic type load cell operate. I hope the concept is very clear to you. So let me discuss about the third type of strain gauge that is called a strain gauge type load cell. Uh, the important thing is there will be a cubic column, there will be a column, cylindrical column, or it may be a cubic column or cylindrical column. It is made up of elastic elements. Inside there will be strain gauge. You can see RG1, RG3, RG4, RG2. These are the different type of strain gauge element. Okay. Uh, so it is made up of a different type of uh, resistive element. It is actually strain gauge. There will be a steel cylinder. Okay. You are actually applying the force over here. You are applying the force over there. You are uh, directly applying the force over there. As you apply the force, when you are going to apply the force, the value of resistance of the strain gauge that is getting varied. Okay, suppose you are you are going to connect these elements in a particular bridge. Okay, the, uh, this is a V stones bridge. You can able to observe the V stones bridge. There is a detector. Uh, initially, the bridge will be balanced. In, initially, initially bridge will be balanced because no force is applied at the beginning. Initially, so galvanometer shows null deflection. Suppose whenever you are applying the force, what is going to happen? The resistive element is getting changed. At that time, the voltmeter shows deflection. At that time, voltmeter is going to show the deflection. So thus we will come to know that as the application of force, whenever you are applying the force, the, uh, the deflection of the galvanometer, that is actually uh, verified here. And if you want, you can able to balance the bridge, then you can able to calculate the unknown resistance. Okay. Normally we are making 
uh, the uh, resistors in a particular quarter bits okay then uh, in, in the normal condition whenever we are not applying the force galvanometer shows zero deflection when you apply the force what is going to happen galvanometer shows deflection because the system become unbalanced so this is the way how you are going to calculate that means uh, the applied force or weight that is proportional to the changes in resistance okay because of changes in resistance bridge is getting unbalanced so that will be uh, deviated or that will be deflected directly to the galvanometer so if you want you can able to measure the voltage also voltage you can able to record many facilities are available recording okay processing indication all the facilities are available these cells convert weight or force into electrical output which is provided by the strain gauge this output can be connected to various measuring instruments for indicating recording and controlling the weight or force so that is possible so here the force that will be converted to change in resistance whenever the change in resistance is happening the galvanometer shows deflection that deflection can be recorded what are the major advantages of load cell as you can see the construction is totally rugged construction and compact and there is no moving part there is no wear and tear highly accurate i have shown the resolution accuracy everything wide range of measurement is possible it can be used for static and dynamic loading stationary loading and a movable type loading that is why it is known as dynamic loading so these are the major advantages as far as the load cell is concerned if i talk about the difficulties or drawbacks of load cell the mounting is difficult actually mounting for that purpose we require crane or some other arrangement that is bit costly so calibration is one of the cumbersome task it's a tedious job okay uh, it's a tricky job uh, it is not an easy task calibration if you want to extend the range or if you want to calibrate it's totally difficult what are the major applications it's a majorly speaking heavy load application so dual tank level controller then back filling machines uh, then lathe machines and you can able to count the weight then tank then hooper uh, then food packing so these are the various just like rice packing packing of rice and uh, food uh, food grains these are the various application you can able to calculate the weight so weight of the food grains how it is possible to more than 1000 ton how will you weigh, uh, weigh or how will you calculate the weight these are the challenging issue so with help of load cell we can Uh, minimize those issues okay these are the major applications a few application there are many more uh, in this session i have discussed about uh, what do you mean by load cell what are the different type of load cell how does load cell operate what are the major applications then finally pros and cons of load cell finally thank you for watching this video if you are having any queries please put up in the comment box